Welcome to the Boxing Talk Show, Favorite Firm, with the Hall of Fame boxing referee. I'm Joe Cortez and co host John Zamel for all of Las Vegas. Come on, guys, let's touch them up. Three fight. I'm Joe Cortez, Favorite Firm. Welcome to the Fairbrook Firm Show here in Las Vegas, Nevada, the boxing capital of the world. My co-host John Zimmel and Joe Cortez here to give you guys a little bit of what's going to be taking place this week. And of course, my friends out in the United Kingdom, my group with Into Boxing, you guys know that this is the week you guys have been waiting for. Your fighter, Tyson Fury, he's stepping up to the plate to show you what he's got. Let's see what he's got, John. Oh, man, I'm so excited, baby. I've been excited for this show all week. I've been excited for this show all year, man. We don't get to do this very often where we focus on one fight because there's so much going on in boxing on a week-to-week basis. But when we can devote all of our time during a show to a one-fight preview, then it's just the most exciting thing. And it's the shows that I know I look forward to the most. Exactly. And I I truly agree. You know, one of the things that you fans out there probably waiting to see what we have to say, our prediction about this fight, what's going to be the outcome. And the outcome of this fight is going to be probably something that you fans either going to love or you're going to hate. No matter what happens, both sides are going to say, well, this happened. I don't want no excuses. No excuses from Deontay Wilder. No excuses from Tyson Fury. Now, what happens in boxing, guys, let me tell you a little bit about as an ex-fighter myself. Sometimes you train so hard for a fight. Sometimes you leave it all in the gym. It's what you call your overpeak. Now, we talk about trainers. Who's going to be the trainers? Now, we know that uh, Deontay Waller has a good trainer, mm-hmm. Mark Breland, former Olympic gold medalist in the welterweight division. And M- Mark Breland has been with Deontay Waller from day one. Now, Mark Breland knows that you're not going to overtrain your fight. I mean, Deontay Waller has a physique in like uh, yeah. Mr. Universe. No, he is. Yeah. I mean, and the thing is, you have to also have speed, conditioning, and your experience in the ring. Name fighters. What kind of fighters have you fought? Who, what name fighters? Now, the other one hasn't really fought nobody big name other than maybe Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz is a big, know, name. A, a big name. And Luis Ortiz gave him some trouble. But he's not Vladimir Klitschko. He's not Vladimir Klitschko. But then again, Klitschko was 11 years past his prime. Well, not 11 years. 11 years into his, in, yeah, into his 11, streak. 11 years as a heavyweight champion. But you know what? He was not. He was 39 years old. Yeah, he was not. so he, much you can say. He was not at his peak when he fought uh, the uh, Tyson Fury. And uh, uh, Deontay... Uh, uh, Maybe there was Luis Ortiz. That's yeah, a fair but, point. But, but I mean, uh, Anthony Joshua, when he fought the, uh, Klitschko... Two I mean, years later? Yeah. I following mean, that loss? Come on, you know what? It, it, it t- tells you a lot about the heavyweight division. So now you say, what happens with uh, uh, Anthony Joshua? Mm-hmm. Everybody's saying, what are you waiting for, Anthony? You know, we, we're here saying to you, you want to step up to the plate? Take the win of this fight. It shuts everybody up. You come out... Come up with your ch- I think sh- this is so shoulders high and say, you know what? I'm ready to take out the best. I want to take on the winner of the Tyson, I got that question. Fury, and um, Deontay Wilder fight. You go ahead. The term baddest man on the planet was made popular by Mike Tyson, correct? Right. Baddest man on the planet doesn't necessarily mean number one ranked heavyweight. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, uh, WBO champion. What it means is the baddest man on the planet. Is the winner of this fight the baddest man on the planet because they're willing to fight the other baddest men on the planet? You, 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 could, you could put a title to that. You could put two of the baddest men going to fight each other. Good. That's good. As opposed to, I don't know, maybe fighting, what, Carlos Takam <laughs> and Joseph Parker and yeah, no, no, whoever they, yeah, exactly. You, you want to put the two best fighting each other at their peak. Mm-hmm. So let's say, okay. That's let, my point. Man. Let's say, you know, Anthony Joshua, come on, step up. And uh, Deontay Waller. I mean, we know that on the menu of the heavyweight division, there's a lot of good ones up there. But which is the most appetizing for the fans? That's the one they want to see. I want the best on the menu. I want the. Mm-hmm. I want the. I, I want to have the appetite to, to say I'm hungry. Exactly. I, I want to see a good fight. So, so we go to the menu. You go to that menu. You say, Yeah. Who are you picking? Well, that's why I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Here's the thing. I want to commend Tyson Fury for everything he's done. First of all and foremost, no matter what happens in this fight, you are a champion inside and outside of the ring. This is the former IBO, former IBF, former WBO, former WBA super heavyweight champion of the world. This is the current lineal heavyweight champion of the world. This is a guy who has beat the guy. That's something significant about the lineal championship. It goes all the way back to James, John L. Sullivan, the lineal champion of the world. That's what we're talking about here. And he lost, what did he gain, 150 pounds? 150 pounds, he was on cocaine, he was drinking alcohol every day, he tried to commit suicide. This is a man who was on the brink of destruction in every way, shape, or form that you can be. And he brought himself out of that. 
He lost 150 pounds, and now he's fighting again for the only belt that he never achieved, the WBC Championship belt. No matter what happens, you're a champion. No matter what, Tyson Fury, and I want to commend you for this. That being said, he's not just fighting a guy. Yeah. He's fighting the baddest man in the world. Yeah, he's well, not running and hiding. Well, I can tell you one thing about Tyson Fury. Uh, Tyson, I never met you. Uh, the only Tyson I met was Mike Tyson. His name's <laughs> and, and you know what? Tyson Fury, I can tell you, I take my hat off to you because you have come up a long ways. You are a champion in the world because you have come back and you have proven. You have inspired so many people out there of the accomplishments. You proved to the world that you can be hit rock bottom. There was only one place to go and back up again, mm -hmm. and you did it. You came back up to the top. So, you know, we're wishing you the very best Saturday night. Hopefully, I'm there to see that fight. And if not, I'll be watching on TV. I'll tell you, I'll be rooting for you for the simple reason that I like to take uh, the underdog and, and say, you know, I want to push you. Whether win or lose, you know what? If you win, great. If you lose, I still say great because mm -hmm. you know what? You step, stepped you up to the plate. Ring, baby. Yeah. You, went up to, you went up against the, the, the top dog out there. Exactly. I mean, I don't see Anthony uh, Joshua doing that. Where is he? You know? Where's Anthony Joshua? You came, you stepped up to the plate, so you got the cojones, like they say, to come up and make it to the top. You went up to the top to fight the best. That's the so, baddest thing in the world, man. That's the truth. That's and let me ask you this. Why is this the right move for Tyson Fury? We know that, right? We know Tyson Fury, it might be a little early for him. But at the same time, this is a guy who needs a big fight. He needs a big name. He needs something to come back and prove what he's got. But if you're Deontay Wilder, you have, you have a $100 million fight on the table with Anthony Joshua eventually. So why is this the right move for Deontay Wilder to fight uh, someone as scary and, and as Tyson Fury after already fighting somebody as scary as Luis Ortiz? Yeah, but you know, I think what happened was you know, the, uh, Anthony Joshua signed a deal a couple of hundred million dollars. With Dazen. Yeah, he, he signed a deal. So he got, you know, he's sitting pretty now. Mm. He's that, just like, a, a, what's your name? Canelo. Uh, Canelo Alvarez. He signed a $365 million deal. So what happened? Those guys now, they feel, got a little relaxed. Now they're fighting the Rocky Fielding. They, they, they're and, not uh, as yeah. hungry anymore. So they're not, they're not. The food going, in their belly, they're, they're, they're not want to go out and get you. you know? No, no, they're saying back. They say, man, I got all the money in the world, you know. I don't have to be fighting all these tough guys. Let me take it easy. Eventually, I'll fight him, but not right now. Right now, I want to enjoy my money. I just hope that you guys making that money. I hope you're saving it because it's not going to last forever. I'll tell you that right now. Let me ask you something. The difference between tested and exposed. When you, when you hear uh, a lot of Anthony Joshua fans and you talk about uh, Vladimir Klitschko knocking him down, him getting up, and, and uh, they say he was tested. They say Vladimir Klitschko tested him. And then they look at Deontay Wilder getting, uh, you know, hit hard by Luis Ortiz, and they say Luis Ortiz exposed him. What's the difference between getting tested and exposed? Is it just in the matter of who you're a fan of, think, or is it, or are they both tested? Were they both exposed? I think they were both exposed. It goes to okay. show that no matter in the heavyweight division, you get hit with one good solid yeah. shot from whoever. It could be the unnamed fighter. Look, if he connects you solid, yeah, if you're a heavyweight pro boxer, you can knock. Yeah, anybody. you, you yeah. can knock anybody down. So. Uh, Anthony Joshua got knocked down by Klitschko. He got up mm -hmm. and won. Okay, and he won. By, 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 he stopped uh, Klitschko. And uh, uh, the, Luis Ortiz, he proved to himself that I mean, he lost, but his stocks went up because yes. he proved to the world that he's not a palooka. No. He, he went out there. He's not he, a resume pattern. No, nah, yeah. he came up there and he did his best. You know what? And he's still in the mix. He's in the undercard. Yeah, he's on the other card. He's, he's on the undercard. He, yeah. You know why they got him on the other card? Because if anything nothing happens with out, Anthony yeah. Joshua, you know, they may say, uh, he, he'd come up and say, uh, if, uh, let's say Deontay Wilder wins, he'll say, Deontay, you gave me the, the first shot, my first loss, but you know what? I want to I want a rematch. And you know, and the fans will buy it because of what happened the first time around. You know, sorry? Hey, I got a historical question for you. We got to go down this. It's a fun, it's a fun one. It's memory lane. This is what we always do. This is a man who's been in boxing longer than most of us have been alive. So I have to ask you, when you talk about heavyweight comebacks, you think about the things that come to mind. You think of Mike Tyson returning after prison. You think about Muhammad Ali returning after, uh, you know, his exile. Tyson Fury's comeback from the brink of destruction, from the, the top of the mountain. He accomplished everything you could ever ask for and then immediately threw it all away. Well, so if he came back right now, what's the significance of that comeback? Well, you know, the difference is that Mike Tyson was not, he didn't, his body was not deteriorating mm -hmm. during that time that he was... Uh, out of boxing. Muhammad Ali, same thing. He was not deteriorating his body. See, Tyson Fury was into drugs, a kind of cocaine, mm -hmm. and alcohol, mental depression, wanted to commit suicide. I mean, there was a lot of things, a lot different. And he ate terribly. Yeah. yeah. 
and, and, and he put 150 pounds. That's enough. I mean, these other two, you can't put them in the same class as uh, Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali when they came when they were in exile from boxing. So, yeah, I think that Tyson Fury is going to have his hands full. But he, it's also a little bit, it's, it's even more significant in some ways, right? Because yeah. he had to come back physically yeah. on top of yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I said I take my hat yeah. off. I take my hat off to him. But he's going up against a guy who has a, a 40 and 0 record with 39 big knockouts. <laughs> that's a big difference, too, you yeah. know? It's not yeah, a guy yeah. that, that was going in there with 20 losses and, and 35 wins. You know, the guy's is in, his record is intact. Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to say to yourself, man, you know, uh, it'll Which, be a miracle if mm -hmm. Tyson Fury, you know, so beats, beats uh, Deontay Wall. I mean, it, that's what's so exciting about it. It is, yeah. it is. And if he wins, you know, everybody will say, oh my God, he made it. What an inspiration to everybody around the world. A man that hit rock bottom, here's an example. Look what he has accomplished. So, exactly. yes, it, it's good. For him, it's good for boxing. It is. It's good for everybody. I couldn't agree you more. You know? And then, now, and then let's get a rematch after that. <laughs> the flip side of that. If Deontay Wilder wins, is there any chance he'll get the credit that he deserves? Because look, no. they, everybody said, no, no, they're not yeah, even... you're nobody. Then he wins uh, WBC heavyweight champion of the world. You say, yeah, you beat a bum. And then he tries to pl fight Pavekin, and Pavekin gets popped for a drug test. Tries to fight Ortiz. Ortiz gets popped for a drug test. He's forced to fight Stavern again. Has that big show, three knockdowns, you know, knockout in the first round. Crazy, crazy knockout. And they say, yeah, but Stavern was washed up. He wasn't even prepared for this fight. Finally makes, is able to make the Luis Ortiz fight. This is a true test. And what do people say? Luis Ortiz is 100 years old. Doesn't yeah. count. Blah, 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 blah. So now if he beats Tyson Fury. He beats Tyson Fury. They'll say, well, they'll he, say, he, he, he beat a drug Yeah, guy. he beat a guy who was, yeah. yeah he didn't know, beat the real you, Tyson Fury. You got to give Tyson Fury a lot of credit. You know, he came up to the plate. He stepped up. He said, I'm going to fight you. I'm going to beat you. And in his mind, that's how he feels, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to see the, I want to see Tyson Fury get maybe the, the toughest fight. That would be great for that boxing. That would be exciting, yes. You know, and then, you know what, I hope that there's a clause on the contract for Tyson, uh, for Deontay Wilder. If it happens, yeah. Because, because there's a possibility he can lose, oh, you know. There's always a possibility. So you have a lose. clause on the contract. If his manager did the right thing, have that contract ready and say, uh, hey, sign here on the line. Mm -hmm. Hey, we got a rematch. Got to have it again. Six months on the line. We're fighting again for the championship. Speaking of contract, what does it say about the Anthony Joshua team, including the Matchroom Sports team and Eddie Hearn and Joshua himself, that despite all their back and forth, all of their posturing, all of everything you hear uh, from the one side or another, and I'm not taking sides here, I'm asking seriously, the fact that Wilder and Fury were able to get their fight done in, what, three days? Right. What does that say about the team that wasn't able to get that fight done. Well, you know what? It's all about money. It's a big business, and it's, it, it all depends on who wants to come up to the play and say, you know what? I'm, put, I'm putting up about $50 million up front. I'm serious about it. Here's oh, he my, did? I, anyway, here's yeah. my money, and what happened? And then Joshua said, uh, no. He didn't want it. Why? Because he already has signed a deal for... Uh, and because he didn't want this fight, man. It's dangerous. Well, you, it, it is dangerous. And if you, if lose, you got a 10-fight deal with Dazen and you're losing the first one, it, it, that's not good for Dazen. No, exactly. That's not good. If Rocky Fielding knocks out Canelo on, on, in two oh, weeks, man. can you imagine? I mean, they go, they go, they go to the, all these investors. It's like, <laughs> that is not good it, for Dazen. It's Dazen's. like the stock's going oh like... Oh, my God. Wow, that would be tumbling so down. <laughs> you know, all your, all, your, all your marbles are gone. You have nothing left. You lose the game. What do you do? Jump off the Empire State Building. It's over mm -hmm. for you guys. Might as well. For you investors. Yeah, no, it's so scary. But, but these fighters know that they have to try to save that money mm -hmm. because it takes only one punch. And it, it, it's <laughs> the whole good, career. Good, nice, sweet prince. Yes, sir. You have a, a glass chin, you know? Mm -hmm. The glass chin gets cracked. You go down. It's and when you're over. fighting Deontay Wilder, you could have a granite chin. It doesn't matter. But you could have a chin made out of whatever Captain America's shield is made out of. And it doesn't really matter when you're fighting a guy who, I mean, legitimately has the biggest punch in, in boxing right now, by yeah, far. I mean, and you know, one of the biggest ever. You, you know, I don't know if you guys ever felt, man, I'm going to admit, as a fighter, I got buzzed one time. I got hit upside Boom. my head. Boom. And, Boom. This, and this was doing training. So a guy named Tony uh, Tauzo, uh, a featherweight out of, out of uh, New York. He was a national Golden Glove champion. And we training up in the Mount Combo gym up in the Bronx. He hit me with a shot doing training. Boom, he buzzed me. And mm -hmm. I felt everything was buzzed. That's and a I, concussion. That's yeah. the only time I've ever felt anything with a punch. And it's not a good feeling. Your legs, you don't feel your legs under you. You mm -hmm. feel like you're walking on a cloud. And you're trying to just keep your hands up. Oh, and yeah. Everything is spinning. So you can imagine getting hit with one or two of those shots by Deontay Wilder like that. Oh, it's over. Look, we saw what happened with Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz held his own. Luis Ortiz is a better boxer. That's one thing I want to make sure I point out. 
Everyone's going to tell me Tyson Fury is a better boxer than Deontay Wilder. You know who else was a better boxer than Deontay Wilder? Luis Ortiz, Bermain Stavern, Arthur Spilka. Everyone he's ever fought was a better boxer than Deontay Wilder. And it doesn't matter because all it takes is one big punch. And if he can land that one big punch, then all your skills and fundamentals go out the window as soon as he lands that one big punch. Because we saw it with Luis Ortiz. He was doing great till he caught that one right hand. In the seventh round, I thought Ortiz was going to put away De Deontay Wilder. Yeah, a lot, most of us did. Deontay Wilder was hanging on. He was running like a, a chicken without a head on. <laughs> yeah, he had to. And that's one thing I really want you guys to remember is that the most exciting thing in sports, in my opinion, is the Deontay Wilder fight right now because his unconventional uh, you know, style leaves him open to all kinds of shots. He can get ended or buzzed or whatever you want to call it, like he did with Luis Ortiz, at any second when he fights the top level of competition. But you know what else he can do? Spark you out. In one punch, he can spark you out. I literally went to go get pizza because I ordered pizza. And I went to go to the door during the Luis Ortiz uh, uh, Wilder fight, right when Ortiz went on his big, because you can't turn around. Don't turn around for one second. I'm still mad at that pizza guy for ringing the doorbell in the seventh <laughs> round. He could have come in the sixth round. And I'm still well, mad about it. Well, you know, can you imagine all the fans when Mike Tyson was fighting out there and he was knocking these guys Blink. all out in the first round? <laughs> I mean, he knocking guys out 30 seconds, 37 seconds, 50 seconds. I mean, he was knocking everybody out. I mean, I, when I was in that ring with him as a referee on nine occasions, uh, eight of those times, uh, well, seven of those times, they were all knockouts. Yeah. With the exception of when I refereed him, when he went the distance the first time, and I was a, uh, James Quick Tillis. Mm -hmm. Mike Tyson was not heavyweight champion yet, but that was his first main event uh, with, a, with a name fighter, James Quick Tillis. He went the distance. Everybody said, uh-oh, he's going to have trouble with Similar this. to Wilder and Stavern's first yeah, fight. Exactly. You, he yeah, exactly. He has a little bit more respect for the yeah. guy, kind of similar to what you saw in the beginning of that Luis Ortiz fight. Yeah. When he, can, when he fears another, you know, not fears, but respects another man's power, yeah. he's uh, a little more cautious. You saw that with Triple G against uh, Canelo the yeah, first you, you time, and Danny Jacobs. You can't be cocky when you're in that ring because, you know, the guy can surprise you. I hate to see these guys coming to the ring with all these fancy dances coming yeah. into the ring. Like Prince I think I met used to do, come into the I ring. I like it, little showmanship. He was a good showmanship. I love Prince I think I met when he yeah. come into the ring. When I'd be in there with him, uh, refereeing this fight, I'd be, I th I th for a while, they, you, I had a feeling I was in the circus. Yeah, it kind of feels like. Because he come in there the way he come in. But it was, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. he was a lot of excitement for boxing. <laughs> but uh, then you got some guys that do all of that, and they get hit with one shot, boom. Yeah. They get knocked out. Like we out. saw with Princess Nassim versus uh, Barrera, which like, you refed. I refereed that fight as yeah, well. Yeah, but, you know, he was out of the ring too long. It was Prince, it was Prince Nassim I met for back Antonio Barrera here in Las Vegas, and Barrera took Prince Nassim I met to school. You, get, you fans remember that fight. It was a night that I'll never forget because it was a, it was a real tough fight. And uh, Prince I think I met really got taken to school. He did. Like he did. Unfortunately, uh, you know, it was a sad end to a storied career. Let me ask you a question because you were talking about cockiness. You're talking about confidence. I don't think there are any. I think these are the two most confident fighters in boxing right now. I think these are the two most confident people on the planet right now. These are two guys whose unwavering belief in themselves is. I mean, beyond measure. I mean, Broner, Broner. Broner's up there too. Broner's <laughs> up there too. Sure, sure, you're right. Broner fighting uh, Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, that's gonna be an exciting that one too. Like, but these are guys who they exude that cockiness on a, on an everywhere basis. It's something that is. It's one of the when you describe Deontay Wilder, just like when you describe Tyson Fury, the word confidence will be in the first ten words you say. What role does confidence play in a fight like this, and how can it be negative? Well, let me tell you, these fighters they come in. You gotta have the confidence in yourself. If you don't have that. Going into a fight, you're already beat. You're already, you're, you're already beat. So yeah. you have to go in there. Mental preparation is so important in a contest. Of course, physical conditioning is really top. But if you don't have it up here, I don't care how prepared you are, you're not going to have it. So you got to go mentally prepared saying, I know I can beat this guy. No matter if he hit with the hardest shot, mm -hmm. I'm going to come back. And these fighters, a lot of these fighters have a heart of a lion. You get, they, 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 they can come back and then... I mean, we've seen what Tyson Fury's come back yeah, from outside of the ring. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can see uh, a lot of fighters have a, a lot of heart, and that's what you need. But m most importantly is the confidence in yourself, mm -hmm. knowing I was put on this planet to be champion, not just a champion, but I want to be the best champion in the world. And you go in there with the attitude, and you know you're in condition, you've done everything right, you got a good trainer, you got a good corner mm -hmm. team, and of course you got to remember one thing, all of this is not good when you have lousy officials. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Have, yeah, the or lousy, judges or anything judges else. Judges or a referee can screw up a fight. Easy. And you know, and that's what, one thing that we have to make sure that the, when the fighters get into the ring, we have good qualified referees and judges for that particular fight. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you see it happen over and over again 
we don't want to see any controversial decisions. I agree 100%. And, you there. know, when you see this, those uh, split decisions where one judge gives one fighter 10 rounds and two to the other, and then the other judge just sees the opposite way. Mm -hmm. 10 rounds for this fighter and two for the other. What How does something like that happen? I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. You yeah. know, there's no concentration. That's why the judges and referees, especially judges, you have to concentrate every second of every minute. You can't lose concentration. If you lose focus when you're scoring a fight, you're out of it. You can't take one second and look at, the, look at somebody walking by, the ring girl, focus on what you're in there for. <laughs> look at the fight, score the fight the way it is. You see too much controversial mm -hmm. fights. We don't want to see that. Because they're not focused. Hey, I got a question. You brought up the training staffs and the training teams. Right. Both these guys have some kind of unconventional training methods. Um, on one hand, you have uh, Deontay Wilder, some unconventional. He has his whole family with him in training camp. Uh, you know, conventionally, obviously, you know, it's they're, they're thought that they should be in solitude. Floyd Patterson famously would fly all the way up to upstate New York for away from his whole family, bought that plane just to do that so he could train in solitude away from his family. Um, whereas Tyson Fury has a... His trainer's younger than me by like three years. He's a 25-year-old right. trainer. Might be 26 come fight night. Who are you talking about? Uh, Tyson Fury's trainer. Oh, 26 years old. Yeah, what, what, well, that's, that's why I, talk, I have on my list here. The trainers are so important. What do you think that... Mark, Mark Breland has a... That's why I told an earlier part mm -hmm. of the show. Mark yeah. Breland is a hell of a trainer. Was an Olympic champion. Mm -hmm. Was a, a world champion. He comes in with experience. You can bring that stuff What about with, Fury's trainer, who's well, 26 well, years old? He's 26 he's, years old. You know, uh, that, he's, I, he doesn't have anybody else. He's he, never fought in a fight. He's never trained a guy in a fight like this. See, and he's that, got Freddie Roach in his corner. Yeah, but, but that's not the. He's not the trainer. He's not exactly. the main trainer. He's not the, he's not the key guy. That's what happens you in boxing. Think that's a mistake? Uh, it could be a big mistake. Now you know when you go into boxing to go, you got a, a, a good champion wants to have the best trainers out there. Manny Pacquiao. Had Freddie Roach for mm -hmm. all those years, mm -hmm. you know, and there's fighters. Brought him back, you know, yeah. For this fight in January, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of fighters out there have good, good seasoned trainers. You know, uh, you, you want to have one of the best trainers out there. You bring on a novice, 25 years old, to train you. I mean, how much does he know? How much? Well, I want to give him a lot of credit because he was with he was with Fury throughout his entire weight loss. He's the one that made sure that Fury didn't overextend himself. That Fury didn't see the mountain as a, you know as a, or the molehill as a mountain. That he really made sure that that slowly but surely Fury kept the belief in himself, kept losing weight and saw at the end of the tunnel there was light and that light was the heavyweight championship of the world again. And so I got to give credit to him where it's due. They obviously have a great relationship, but in that ninth round, 10th round, when you've been getting battered and trying to avoid shots from Deontay Wilder for how many minutes? No. I mean, do you really want a 25-year-old, a 26-year-old in your corner to lean on? See, I mean, see, see, yeah, 25, 26 years, he's probably good in physical fitness. Mm -hmm. Get you down to where you belong to train you. But in those trenches. And, yeah, yeah. But when it comes to the, the trenches, you have to be have been in the trenches yourself. I've been in there in wars with your fighter in the past. You got to have a track record mm -hmm. to prove to me that you're the best. You know, hopefully you come out ahead. Yeah. You know, if you come out ahead Saturday night, good. They say, hey, we take a hat off to you. Now that's one stepping stone for your career, for your resume. Oh, exactly. As a good trainer. But it takes you break one. Tyson Fury back. Yeah. This, this guy's in boxing. Trainer's been in there for 30, 40, 50 mm -hmm. years. Experience in the ring. They never the get fighter, a shot like this. You know, and, and, and some of those guys don't even get a shot like exactly. this. Exactly. So you're blessed that you got a shot in the heavyweight championship fight of the world. I'm one of the best out there. Prediction but, time. Prediction time. I Let's say, hear it. I say Deontay Wilder gets win. Uh, a win by knockout before eight rounds. Before eight rounds. I love that. You heard it here first. All right, my turn. Here's, I'm going to play a scenario for you because I've been thinking this out. It's the 10th round, right? Tyson Fury's up on the cards either 8-1 or 7-2, depending on which judge's card right. you're looking at. Clearly, he's winning every round, you right. know, just about. Uh, you give Wilder one, maybe two, but he's waning. His energy's waning. He's going down. He's getting tired. He just lost 150 pounds. This is a big 6'9 man who has, uh, you know, been trying to move and avoid T Deontay Wilder, who is a freak athlete's punches for 10 rounds now. And he's moving, he's bobbing, he's weaving. He knows all he has to do is survive. But what happens? Deontay Wilder lands one right here, right hand, flush. Bang! And all of a sudden, he gets knocked down. He's not knocked out. He's knocked down. Gets up, standing eight count. He says, I'm fine, I'm fine. And he manages to avoid him for the rest of the, for the, rest of the uh, round. Now, in, the, in between that, in between the 10th and 11th, what's going on? He's got a 25, 26-year-old trainer in his ear telling him, you're good, you're good. He's got the unwavering belief in himself. He's still got the heart of a champion. He's still a lion in there. But on the other side, you have a shark in Deontay Wilder who smells blood. And every time he smells blood, he lets loose. 
And I don't think Tyson Fury can survive a whole 11th round full of Deontay Wilder throwing long, strong shots. And eventually, there's a stoppage. In the 11th round, Deontay Wilder still WBC champion of the world. That's how I see it going down. Okay, there. good. That's good. You know, the other thing you got to look at from the referee's perspective. Now, this could be a, a, a tough fight back and forth. Ooh. I mean, I mean, fighters are going to get hit with, with some shots. Now, a good referee with good experience behind him is going to be a, a, a one of the key elements of this fight. I mean, it all takes a, a good corner man on each side, but the referee is there for one purpose. First and foremost, the safety of the fighter. So I, if a fighter gets, he gets hurt, I'm already watching him close. Now, he knocks down the other opponent. Then the opponent gets up, he knocks down, and they're knocking each other down. That's, so far, that's a hell of a fight. It's a great fight for the spectators fans. Yeah. yeah, that's what the fans want to see. They want to see knockdowns. They want to see a knockout. But they want their fighter to win. Mm -hmm. It can happen, but, you know, Deontay Waller is going to have that speed. He's going to be moving, moving. I, 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 I still say that Tyson Fury's conditioning is going to fade out about yeah, a fifth, I think so too. four, fifth, sixth round. Oh, that early, okay. Yeah, that early, I think the Tyson Fury is going to fade mm -hmm. because it's different when you're sparring in the gym, oh. eight, nine, or ten rounds with, with other B-class uh, <laughs> uh, heavyweights training. But when you're going against the best... Who's the, a freak out there? And, I mean, and, and, the, and the gloves are 10-ounce gloves, okay? They're not 16 ounces like in the gym. Now they're 10-ounce gloves, and this guy is one of the best in the world, <laughs> one of the heavy, hardest punchers in mm -hmm. the world. And let me tell you, Deontay Wilder has some speed as well. Uh, the other thing that I can say that can happen, trouble is that uh, Tyson Fury is a little taller mm -hmm. than Deontay Wilder, mm -hmm. and he got some, he got some good boxing skills. Oh yeah. And if he uses he's the, mobile. he's mobile. And if he start using the jabs on the outside and keep Deontay Wilder at a distance, it may cause problems for Deontay Wilder. Mm -hmm. He may be, be he may be a little confused. He did the Klitschko. Yeah, he may be confused a little bit, but then in the later rounds, like I said, seven, eight Hands rounds. Hands start dropping. He, he, he starts in fatigue. The, Not moving as much. The gas tank is empty. And you know what? He, then that's when uh, Tyson Fury you know, gets to go down. Good night, sweet prince. Yeah. This is fun, man. I know either way, we're going to have a lot more questions answered this time next week. On this show next week, you know you can catch us every time. Uh, 1, 1 p.m. every Monday here in uh, Las Vegas time. 9 p.m. England time. You're talking, uh, I mean, what more can you ask for? We're going to have all the answers we need. Come, what's coming up next? We can talk about it. And we got to talk about what fight's coming a week after that. Yeah. And not only that, now remember that this Tyson Fury and the uh, Deontay Wilder fight is what it's the first pay per view heavyweight fight. Oh, since the uh, since Lennox Lewis Len and Mike Tyson, Mike first Tyson. one that's pay per view heavyweight in both U.S. and the U.K. Exactly, that's so a it, big deal, baby. It is a big deal. So you know, you fans out there really getting a treat when it comes wait. to the heavyweight division. So the heavyweight division is finally back again, but there's not enough heavyweights out there. These guys bump each other off. There's two or three guys that get bumped off. Hey, but you know who we got in the undercards? Yeah. We got the newcomers. We got Joe Joyce. Joe we Joyce. Got, we got, obviously, Luis Ortiz. Joe Joyce is a guy you like a lot. You talk yeah. about him pretty well, often. Yeah, well, Joe Joyce is a nice guy. He's you know he's 33 years of age and uh, he was an Olympic uh, silver medalist from the mm -hmm. United Kingdom. Almost gold medalist. Split decision. Yeah, yeah. And he has a, he has a lot of skills. I, I like his uh, his, uh, his jabs. I, I like, like him, too. I, I like his, right, his straight right-hand punch. Mm -hmm. He's good at this. I've seen he can him, move. I've seen him training, and uh, we've been together several times talking, and I see where his heart is at. And he's kind of confident of where he's going with the heavyweight like division. And he's also tall. He's one of those yeah, big heavyweights yeah, yeah, that we've seen yeah, now. Yeah, he's, he's about six, uh, six nine. Yeah, he's pretty big, man. He's, he's tall. big. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I like him. We'll see Luis Ortiz, King Kong. We'll watch him again. And one I'm very excited about, Jared Hurd is going to be coming back to defend his title that he just won over Arislandi Yara, which is one of, the, uh, one of the fights of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Make sure you tune in for the rest of the year. Make sure you follow us on Spotify, on iTunes, on uh, YouTube. Make sure you follow us, obviously, on this Facebook page. Uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram, at Fair But Firm Show. Make sure you follow all of these. And uh, make sure you tune in for the rest of the year, gang, because we got yeah. our Fair But Firm Awards, and we have big fight after big fight for the rest of December. Make sure you don't miss any of them. Honestly. Yeah, we want to offer our condolences to uh, Bill, uh, the friend of uh, Jackie Nunez, I, one of our producers back east. Uh, Bill... Uh, Forget his last name. I'm sorry about that, Billy, but yeah. uh, but uh, Bill is uh, was one of the great uh, composers of music and uh, did a lot. He, was, he just passed away uh, this morning, and uh, uh, one of the guys from the old the old doo wops a cappella stuff back in the 60s, 70s. He wrote so many. He wrote like over 100, and almost close to 200 songs for different inter in, uh, entertainers out there. So Jackie, our condolences to you and uh, Bill's family. We wish you the very best. And uh, remember, guys. In boxing, 
You had to keep your guards up at all times, protect yourself at all times, be bobbing and weaving, and remember, I'm fair but I'm firm. Touch him up. My champ right here, John Zimmel, Joe Cortez. See you next week.